and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am Krista Burns at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Library Commission's weekly online event where we do um, present topics of, that be of interest to librarians in the state. Uh, we have commission staff that do presentations and we bring in guests like we have today. Um, we do these sessions every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. They are free and they are recorded. So if you're not able to attend a live session, you can always listen to one of our recordings that's available on our website. Uh, this morning, we are going doing a session on the upcoming Nebraska Book Festival, which is in, going, going to be held November 14th. And I think I'll just pass it on over to Mary Jo Ryan here at the commission to get us started with our uh, discussion. Go ahead. Thank you, Krista. Uh, welcome, everybody. It's so good to see you all uh, have joined us. And I'm hoping to see a lot of you at the Nebraska Book Festival on Saturday, November 14th. Um, I have, I'm very lucky today to have here with me Rod Wagner. Good morning. Good morning, Rod. Rod here. Rod's the director of the Nebraska Library Commission, but he's also a longtime supporter and founder of the Nebraska Center for the Book. Rod and I were actually founding members, weren't we? I believe that's right, along that, with some other good folks. That was a while ago, wasn't it? A while. We won't say how. I'm not sure how long. Is it 10 years? Is it 20 oh, years? More than 10. Oh, boy. <laughs> well, we're not going to count. We're just going to say that we're happy that the Nebraska Center for the Book exists and that we're, we're able to present this wonderful book festival again this year. Also with us today, Stephanie Grace Whitson. Hi, Stephanie. Hi. Stephanie's a local Nebraska author with a large following. She writes, uh, well, I guess you would say Christian fiction, mm -hmm. and it's uh, very, very, very well received, and she's a terrific talker. We've had her on our <laughs> book talk radio show many times, had a lot of fun talking mm -hmm. with her, and she's read for us uh, at several events, and she'll be reading at the Nebraska Book Festival. She'll be one of our featured readers. Also, and not here actually in the studio, or in the office with us, I'm used to doing radio, so the studio, the <laughs> office with us. Uh, but but at, at his own office is J.B. Brummels. Hi, J.B. Good morning, Mary Jo. I'm so glad to hear your voice. I'm always so happy when this works. It's just <laughs> magic to me. <laughs> J.B. is a wonderful Nebraska poet who's had a number of work out, works out, and he has a brand new pe work out um, from Backwaters Press, which is one of our premier publishers here in Nebraska. And JB's also a professor in the English department at Wayne State College. Uh, anything else you'd like to say, JB, about yourself? Oh no, I don't really want to talk about myself too much. I just want to talk about the book festival and listen to you guys talk. Uh, All right. No, I think that's a pretty good introduction. Fair enough. <laughs> JB's on the board of the Nebraska Center for the Book and has been for many years, and he's one of the people who's been very faithful in supporting the book festival and providing input into the development of the book festival over the years. Including hosting one of its own at Wayne State. That's right. When are we going back to Wayne State for the book festival? Well, we should do that soon. Uh, I, we'll have to figure that one out. Okay. I think so. Oh, but let's talk about this year's festival. Um, this year's festival, as I said, is November 14th. It's here in Lincoln, and it is, that's a Saturday. It's all day Saturday. Um, I can give just a little bit of detail about about the uh, festival schedule, but we'll get into more detail as we go along today. Um, the main points I want to make is that uh, at 8 o'clock in the morning, most of you won't care to be there that early, but some of you <laughs> might, it's the Nebraska Center for the Book Annual Meeting. And we invite all our members to join the board on that at that time and just kind of talk about what the year's been like and, and what we have planned for the future. Um, and it, then after that, at 9.15, the readings and the writer's workshop start. And that throughout the day, there will be vendors in the, in the uh, grand uh, rotunda of the Nebraska State Historical Society's Museum of Nebraska History. And that's located at 15th and P Street. Is that right? Yeah, 15th and P Street. It's on the corner. And uh, the, the vendors are always a, a lot of fun, aren't they, J.V.? Oh, yeah. It's wonderful to walk through and see what everybody's got to offer and look at all the new books and some older books, certainly. Yeah. And I think there probably will be some other things that, that we haven't been had in the past. I know that one of the vendors is a massage therapist. She'll be oh, doing really? chair massages for all the writers who have, like, got writer's cramp during the workshop. And, <laughs> and we also have nice... Uh, nice uh, 
coffee and snacks from the coffee house here in Lincoln that will be provided through the support of the uh, University of Nebraska Press, the friends of the University of Nebraska Press. So it's a really nice kind of festive, relaxed day. Readings, writers' workshops, we have a lovely awards luncheon that we'll talk more about, and, and a number of other activities, including what I'm looking forward to, which is a conversation with, between three Nebraska poets. Um, maybe what we should do is just kind of start about start talking a little bit about how the festival came to be. JV, were you around for the first one? Well, um, I was there, um, and there were a number of sort of literature festivals before we actually officially started, and I was at those as well. Uh, but I didn't have a lot to do with the with the early uh, book festivals. Um, but there's a long tradition, and I've enjoyed them all. And it's a wonderful time for everybody to get together. Uh, once a year to uh, see some people you don't see all that often and to hear what everybody's up to. And to hear those those writers um, read from their own work. If you haven't done that before, or for those of you librarians that lead um, book groups, if your book group has never done this, has never had a writer come and read from their own work, or has never made a field trip to something like the book festival, it is a mind-blowing experience. It just really is. Stephanie, uh, maybe you could talk a little bit about what you've done with book groups. Um, it's always a lot of fun to get feedback from people who've read your work. It's always very encouraging for the writer. I don't know anything that's more fun for a writer than to finally get in contact with some people who've actually read their work because it's a very lonely occupation. You're usually by yourself in an office and you don't get a lot of feedback. So that can be a, very, a big highlight for a writer's year to, to be in a room full of people who um, will actually listen <laughs> while they read something that they've slaved over and maybe rewritten 90,000 times, and they finally have print on the page. Um, and I love to talk about Nebraska history, so I usually do a little bit of this is where I got this as an idea, and I always tell people that what really happened is a lot more interesting than what, you know, what a, anything I could make up. And I love to talk about the factual background for some of the historical fiction that I do. So it, it's always a good time, always a good time. Yeah, I'd like to second what Steph. Go ahead, JV. I'm sorry. Oh, I was just going to say I want to second that. I mean, you know, um, yeah, we work, and what we do is pretty lonely. I mean, it's one person and a keyboard, and that's where we spend most of our time. So when we get a chance to actually get face to face with some readers, some listeners, um, and get that that human response, that direct and immediate response, that's that's very, very helpful. Um, it's one of my favorite things as well. Uh, in this writing life, uh, is to get that kind of direct contact. I think the other thing that happens at a festival, too, um, although I haven't been um, to the Nebraska Book Festival before, any time that a group of writers get together, that's always fun to encourage each other in the work, too. Um, as in any profession, you have your unique little quirks that only other writers can understand. And it's kind of fun to get together with a group of people who do understand and uh, to share the private jokes and whatever. But um, that's also a highlight of something like this because it enables people from a very solitary profession to get together and share. That's good, too. And for those librarians out in our audience that, that work with book, book groups, you can kind of see why this would be a really fun thing for your customers your, who are in book groups and those who aren't to come to the festival and to enjoy this opportunity as well. Now, one of the things that's happened with the Nebraska Book Festival, this is the 18th Nebraska Book Festival, and it has actually evolved over the years. Um, we started out with um, a focus on the, what I call the dead Nebraska writers, <laughs> but our, our famous, classic, genius writers from Nebraska. And our focus was mostly on that, and we, uh, we went from college to college and had our uh, festival in the, at those colleges. Mm -hmm. And Rod, that was a pretty good way to get started, don't you think? I think it was a good way to get started, and uh, we had great uh, help uh, and uh, support from uh, those who stepped up and offered their uh, colleges and universities as a place. Uh, they provided the uh, people for the hard work of organizing. And believe me, it is hard work. And J.B. knows that. Because <laughs> he does. Wayne State was one of those uh, host institutions some years ago. Uh, University of Nebraska at Kearney has uh, been the uh, lead and the host for the uh, 
event in past years, I think three times at least, uh, it was held there. So. And I, I remember Shattered State College, Shattered, Peru State yeah, College. Peru. So that was kind of the history, at University of Nebraska. So it, it's really made the rounds around from university to college across the state. That was kind of the history. And then as we begin to take a more contemporary, look at more contemporary writers, um, we looked at having festivals that focused on Plains area writers, not just Nebraska writers. And then um, I think JV probably was one of the people who brought up the idea that we kind of begin to return back to our roots of focusing on Nebraska writers. You want to talk about that, JV? Well, it, it seemed to make sense. I mean, yeah, much much in the history of the book festival is, has, has worked very well. And I remember very fondly uh, Shadron State, uh, Peru State, the Wayne State one, uh, and, and others. And we were spread, though, and seemed not to, the focus kept shifting around, and it seemed to be time to look uh, locally, look at Nebraska writers. I mean, there's such a great tradition of Nebraska writers. I mean, Mary Kill, you mentioned the, uh, uh, the, the, you know, well, Nyhart, and Sandoz, and Cather, and Isley. Uh, you didn't mention them by name, but that, that generation, or those generations, and that's a heritage we, in all Nebraska, be very, very proud of their literary heritage. Uh, one of the things Nebraskans I think you'd be proud of too is the current state of, of uh, literature in Nebraska. There are a lot of Nebraska writers and they're working very productively and they're doing very good work. And so to focus upon Nebraska writers who are currently working, um, I think is helpful for those, for, for us uh, who are working. And it makes what writers are doing contemporarily more familiar to a public, and that's always important, too. The other thing I wanted to, to mention is that um, the Nebraska Center for the Book has just been a steadfast supporter of this kind of activity throughout the years. And so for those of you who don't know what the Center for the Book is, it's, it's really not a place. It's, it's a coalition of organizations like the Library Commission, um, libraries across the state, the Humanities Council, a variety of organizations have come together with individuals that want to support books and reading and writing. And that's, this is one of the things we do to support that. Um, maybe if we move on a little bit to the luncheon portion of the day, that's our awards luncheon. That way we could, uh, we could go ahead and, and give you just kind of a lowdown of, of one of the other activities that is big with the Nebraska Center for the Book and then just kind of focus on what we're going to do during that luncheon. Um, I noticed we have some questions. Oh, that's from before. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, would you like to go out to the website? That's a good idea. We're going to go to the website. Chris had just reminded me we've got links here. And those links are on the Our Delicious account if you want to see those links and go back to them later. Do you want to do the Facebook page or just go straight to the... Start with the book festival and we'll go to Facebook later. Okay, this is the book festival homepage. And we have quite a bit of information here. Um, if you see Get Involved, Read the Book in the right-hand corner, that's a rotating of, of all the, the different authors. It rotates to their books so people can see all the different books that are represented that are 2009 Nebraska books. There's Stephanie Grace Whitson's book up there at the top. There it is. Mm -hmm. Harley Jane Kozak, A Date You Can't Refuse, A Lantern in Her Hand. The reason why that's on there, even though we know that Beth Streeter Aldridge is no longer with us, um, because Teresa Lorenzen, who's the uh, curator of the Beth Streeter Aldridge House in Elmwood, Teresa's going to come in at uh, 4 o'clock on, on Saturday, and she's going to lead a group di book discussion on A Lantern in Her Hand. And this is something we haven't done before. I think it's going to be a blast. Because I think a lot of the people who come to this will have read A Lantern in Her Hand and will want to talk about it. So I'm hoping that we have a lot of people in that session who've read the book and want to talk about it. Moving on down the list, um, that's A Sand Hills Ballad by Ledette Randolph. These are all Nebraska writers. Here we have J.V.'s book, A City at War. J.V., interesting mm. cover on that book. Well, thank you. I'm glad it's, it's meant to be noticeable. Um, I'm not sure what's all going on on that. Uh, Greg Kosmeski, Backwaters Press, picked that cover, and I'm very pleased with it, though. I mean, it's just, it's, it's got, I love the form of it. I you do, know, the too. On it. Yeah. Can't wait to see it in person. Yeah. Um, the next book is 
Effigies. This is a, a book of poetry of anthology, actually, edited by Allison Hedgecoke. We also have uh, Michael Forsberg, who is a well-known conservation photographer here in Nebraska, and he will be here talking about how he does his work. And I think some of the people who did the writing in his book, uh, including Ted Kuzer and Dave Wishart, will be will be here as well, talking about how the writing pairs with the photography. Um, of course, Ted Kuzer will be here, and this is his latest book, Lights on a Ground of Darkness. The Lauren Isley Reader has been reissued by the Lauren Isley uh, Society, and they will be, some of their members will be here reading from that. And I think this new version has an instruction by Ray Bradbury. Yeah, yeah pretty cool, huh? Sean Doolittle will be here talking about his book, Safer. Mary Pfeiffer will be here talking about her new book, Seeking Peace, Chronicles of the Worst Buddhist in the World. <laughs> And she'll be reading from that book, along with the, uh, Hilda Raz will be here, and she'll be reading from What Happens, her latest book of poetry. So you can see it's a real variety, I think. It shows, I think, depth and the, the variety of our amazing Nebraska writers. So I'm really pleased with the lineup. And these readings will take place all day long, uh, starting at 915 and ending at, I believe, the last one is about 4.15, or maybe it goes till 5.15. Is that correct? It does. The last one goes till 5.15. And then we get to go hear more. And then we get to go hear more. Yeah, Stephanie just mentioned that after that, we have a short break, and we move out of the State Historical Society down the street to a coffee house that has will be set up upstairs for us to have an evening of readings. We'll have a hosted readings from 6 to 8 p.m., and the lineup for this is also very interesting, and if you'll bear with me, I'm going to just talk a little bit about who they are. Echo Poetico is a, a pair of people, a musician and a slam poet, Dominic Garay and Oscar Rios Poirier. Beth Gillespie is a slam poet. Ryan Johnson is a poet. Lisa Knopp is a, is a writer. Greg Kosmicki is a poet and writer. Clara Kuchera, Marge Sizer, Stam Stecker, and Marnie Voss. These are all people from all over Nebraska who are coming in to do these hosted readings, and I think it'll be really fun. Um, it's a coffee house, but they do have food, so for people who haven't had a chance to grab dinner, it would be an opportunity to have a snack and, um, and also hear some readers. And if you go to this place on our uh, website that, that Krista was just showing, you can learn more about all those readers. At 8 p.m., we have an open mic, and one of the things I didn't mention yet is that at the work we do have writers workshops all uh, one in the morning and one in the afternoon at the festival and these writers workshops will be doing writers projects and the writers at the writers projects can will be coming to read at the open mic as long as anybody else who wants to i mean anybody from lincoln can come to this open mic or from all over nebraska but people from lincoln can just walk in and read so that'll be kind of interesting too and i don't know how long that'll go on what time do they close? <laughs> yeah, I don't think they close till midnight or one o'clock, so it could go on late. Some of us will not stay. Long gone. <laughs> so if you look at the schedule, Crystal has pulled up the schedule. This will kind of give you an idea. The annual meeting in the beginning of the day, 8 a.m. 9.15, we begin our readings and writers' workshops. 11.30 to 1.30 is the luncheon. 2 to 3 is the roundtable discussion with three Nebraska poets. And Rob, maybe you could talk, and JD too, because you were part of the board meeting where this was discussed at the Nebraska Center for the Book, mm -hmm. but this is a brilliant idea, I think. It's a conversation with three of our preeminent poets who have, by the way, been a sort of a readers or a reading and writing support group for each other over the years. Well, I, I don't remember uh, whose idea it was. It certainly wasn't mine, but it's, it's a great idea. I think I'm looking forward to the whole day, but I think this in particular. I mean, Ted Kuzer, Bill Clefcorn, Don Welch, uh, these poets are each institutions in the state, and they are contemporaries. They've known each other for a long time. Um, they're just, uh, they're, I'm very eager to hear what, the, what they've got to say. I've got you know, unbridled respect for them as individuals and for their work uh, and for what they've done for other poets and writers for years in the state. So, yeah, I'm really looking forward to this. 
remember the conversation the board had about this, Rob? I'm, I'm sitting here trying to remember, and I, I really don't, but I think everyone, but whoever did bring it up to begin with, everybody just thought, oh, what a great idea. We hope we can work that out. And, and these guys are so generous. Um, they, uh, I, I think, pretty readily agreed to do it. So we're just really uh, delighted. This will be a really special part of a great program. So uh, like JV, I'm really looking forward to this part of the, pro of the festival program. I know Becky Faber, who's one of the board members on the Center for the Book, she's at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. She has been a big supporter of this idea. And I think it's interesting to have the sort of keynote event be something very informal like this, a conversation. I think it'll be it'll be held in the auditorium of the uh, Nebraska State Historical Society Museum of Nebraska History. And that auditorium, if you haven't been there, is pretty intimate. It's not like a big cavernous auditorium. So I think it'll be a very fun event, and we're looking forward to it. Um, if we could go back just for a minute to the awards luncheon. Uh, for those of you who don't know this, the uh, Nebraska Center for the Book does provide yearly awards. Uh, one is the Mildred Bennett Award, which recognizes an individual who has made a significant contribution to the literary tradition in Nebraska. And uh, that will be announced. We can't announce it now, but that will be announced. It's at, a surprise. It's a surprise <laughs> at the luncheon. Sure. So buy a luncheon <laughs> ticket. Yeah, it's not a surprise to the person who got it. That's good. And so then we want them there. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's true. And then the second award is the Jane Geske, the Jane Pope Geske Award. And uh, Jane Geske has just been was a wonderful person. Um, some of us knew her personally. She was the director of the Nebraska Library Commission for many years. She's a was a bookseller. She was just a tremendous force for literary health in this state. And this this award goes to an organization that has made an exceptional long-term contribution to our, our literary, our state literary tradition. So those two awards are always um, given at the awards luncheon. In addition, the Nebraska Book Awards are given at the, at the awards luncheon. And I think if you click on that, here we are. The Book Award winners are um, on the screen up in front of you. We are very excited to know that most of those uh, winners will be represented by either the writer or the publisher who will come to accept the award. We know for sure that some people will speak. That includes Ron Hansen, who will be speaking, and Stu Magnuson. Um, we think perhaps there'll be a couple of other speakers who will either speak or read a small portion from their books. And that's always exciting, isn't it, Rod? Yeah, this is really, uh, on the few times we've uh, done this, uh, has been a really popular part of the festival because people really do enjoy the chance to uh, have, a, have a chance to hear from the uh, author uh, of the books that have received awards uh, because they have interesting thoughts to share about their books and they do some readings and, uh, and we have some, always have exceptional uh, awards to offer in this category, so uh, that'll, that'll be a really neat part of the festival. And we're just delighted. Uh, Ron Hansen has a wonderful book, uh, Exiles. Uh, he's uh, uh, well known and uh, we're proud that he's a Nebraskan. He'll be back here. He lives in California. He'll be back here for the uh, program. And uh, uh, Stu Magnuson has a, just a wonderful book uh, and he too will be on that. Uh, uh, he will be here to talk about his book, too, and so this is a tremendous opportunity to get uh, familiar with these uh, uh, folks and uh, hear about their uh, books. Yeah, and, and it's always fun to, to see the people who win the awards because, you know, even these people like Ron Hansen, who's a famous author, they're very touched and very yeah. pleased to, to win an award from their home state, so... It's pretty cool. Um, just sort of moving on for the rest of that, um, one, another thing that will happen at that luncheon, which is very exciting for us library people, is that we will announce the 2010 One Book, One, Ana one, book, one Nebraska book that we will be reading all over the state next year. It's a big secret. <laughs> 
But we're excited about it, aren't we, Rod? Yes, many secrets. <laughs> I know. Uh, it's very fitting, uh, and uh, more about that uh, at the time. Yeah, yep. So buy a luncheon ticket. Um, if you're wondering about right now about uh, registration for that you might want to tell your customers in your libraries, there is no registration required for the conference or for the festival. You just come, enjoy yourself. However, the luncheon, it would be nice if people would purchase luncheon tickets in advance. There will be some luncheon tickets available at the event, but it would be swell to get luncheon tickets in advance. And there's a right there there's ticket information so people can if you click on PDF version, you can see they simply send me a check for twelve dollars with a note how many people are coming and, and you do still have openings. We do. I I uh, I know there will be some tickets sold at the event. So okay. we've got some extra. Um, the other thing that does require a registration is the writers workshops. They are full at this time, but you can go to this you could to, you can go to this address and it's our library training portal. And when you get there, this is what it looks like. You click on the 14th of November. You get two choices of writer's workshops come up. One is the morning workshop, which is Kelly Madigan Erlinson. And her workshop is called Passing the So What Test, Writing Memoir That Matters. <laughs> the second workshop is in the afternoon, 3.15 to 5.15. And that's Harley Jane Kozak will be teaching that. And her workshop is called Help, I Think I've Got a Book in Me, From Pipe Dream to Publication. <laughs> so, that, again, two good workshops right now. They are full, but I can guarantee you that you would want, if you're interested in this, you will want to get on the waiting list. If you click, don't you click on waiting list, is that how you do it? And you can put yourself on the waiting list and then come, just go to the workshop and see if any of the people who are registered did not show up because I wouldn't, be a bit surprised if there are several no-shows. It just happens. That's how it happens. And right now we've, we're full, I'm sure, at both of them, right? There are some already on the waiting list. Yeah. But give it a try. You never know. It's worth trying. So though that's the, the writer's workshop. I um, think we've pretty much talked about the schedule. We kind of bopped around a little bit. Um, let me I just wanted to say about signing up for these, there is no charge for these workshops, too, so just get your name on the list, at least, and mm -hmm. then, like Mary just said, show up. Um, sometimes, depending on how many cancellations we get ahead of time, we may be able to tell you, oh, by the way, you were signed up on the waiting list, and now you can have an official spot if you want. It depends as it gets closer to the day if we have time to do that, but since there is no charge, just get your name on the list and show up and see if you can get a seat or not. Um, does it hurt, hurt and cost you anything just to sign up? Thanks for reminding me of that, Krista. We do send out reminders to the people who have signed up. Okay. So just in case they find that it's not going to work for them, then they, then they let us know, then we can let you know. Well, and the cool thing about this is there's a lot going on all at the same time. So if you do come down, you can't get into a workshop. There's still going to be plenty of book-related, interesting things to go to and uh, to be involved in. And vendors. The vendors are going to be quite a lot of fun, I think, plus the, the State Historical Society Museum has a museum shop, so you can shop in there, too. It's a good shopping opportunity. Christmas shopping. Yeah, do a little holiday shopping, whatever. And you never know. We have a lot of Nebraskans who probably haven't spent any time in the museum, and they're cha they have changing exhibits that happen in these corner and that corner, so. Yeah. Yeah, one that of would the be fun, too. That if you haven't seen, they have a new uh, exhibit at the state, at the museum of WPA era Nebraska artwork. Fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. So if you're familiar with that kind of artwork, that kind of public artwork, mm -hmm. it's very interesting to see what was going on in Nebraska at that time with that public art project. So that was, that's very cool too. So people should bring their uh, checkbooks, their cash. <laughs> <laughs> but, but they also have a chance to get their book signed because uh, we have, we'll have a lot of people, a lot of writers uh, presenters are uh, there to personally uh, autograph the book. And that's yeah. another thing, that for any author who's here doing a signing, I, I, I'm pretty confident in saying they would be thrilled if someone who's read them cared enough to bring the book and say, would you sign this for me? That's always a wonderful thing for a writer to have happen. Yeah, that's very and cool. And you don't have to be apologetic about that. Readers never have to be apologetic about, about that. I'm glad to know that. No, it's great. 
and it won't be just it'll be the the featured writers who are doing the uh, readings of course they will be prepared to do signing but I've also been telling other Nebraska writers to be sure and come by and sign up there's going to be a, a table where they can sign up to do uh, signings as well because I know there's going to be a lot of people there who are not our featured readers who have got books that you're reading and that your customers are reading and so they can get their books signed as well so and there will be a bookstore of course to buy books and then get them signed. So Lee Booksellers is going to bring out uh, one of their traveling bookstores, and it'll be a lot of fun to go through the materials they have. It'll be featured Nebraska writers. I guess at this point, I would like to ask if there are any questions on the part of those of you in the audience. And please don't hesitate. If you don't have a microphone, you can type your question. I've gone ahead and unmuted everybody, so if you do have a microphone, just speak up. If not, type into our questions section of the interface, and we'll see you there and answer your question from there. Uh, Laura says it sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> okay, Laura, I hope to see you there. That'd be great. Come stand in public library. The festival relies on a number of organizations. We have some new uh, contributors this year that we haven't, probably haven't had in the past. But we always want to be sure to thank all of those organizations, people who have contributed in one way or another to the funding, necessary funding to uh, make the uh, festival possible. Yeah, that's true. In fact, I should say it is, in fact, <coughs> due to the work of the Nebraska Center for the Book the Nebraska Humanities Council, and the Nebraska Library Commission, that this even happens. And without the Nebraska State Historical Society donating us the space free of charge, I'm sure we wouldn't be having a festival this year. Um, in addition, the Duncan Family Trust provided some, some uh, funding. Lee Booksellers generously sends their staff and their stock um, to, the, to the vendor tables. Um, the Nebraska Arts Council provided funding. The Prairie Fire newspaper provided us uh, these great ads free of charge. Good half-page ads, beautiful. Um, uh, oh, University of Nebraska Press, my gosh, they are such good supporters of, of a lot of things, but particularly of the festival, they're hosting, the, their friends of the University of Nebraska Press are hosting all the refreshments, and that's a big thing because many of us organizations are not allowed to purchase things like refreshments. So it's nice to know a friends group can do that. The Woods Charitable Fund has been very generous. I mean, we just have been very lucky this year, I think. And thank you for reminding me. Uh, another thing, um, we got a question? We do have a question. Yeah, um, Janet from here at the Library Commission wants to know, how do I become a member of the um, Nebraska, Nebraska Center for the, Center for the so Book? And receive um, news of future events. Fabulous. You can become a member of the Nebraska Center for the Book by, if you go to www, get in there like this. Uh, maybe there's a link under Get Involved. Let's see if there's a link under Get Involved. Uh, join NCB. There it is up at the top there. At the right. At the top of the right. Blue. Join the Nebraska Center for the Book. Right there, click on that link. There we go. And you can join the Center for the Book and help support us. And then if you go back another step where we were, and you go up to the top, there's a bunch of ways you can get involved with the festival. Obviously, reading the books, and we've listed those. If you know of an organization that would like to help sponsor the festival, we are still in need of some funding. Catherine Brockmeyer here at the, at the Nebraska Library Commission is pulling together a crack cadre of volunteers to do all kinds of things at the festival. We would love to have some volunteers, and I know she'd be thrilled to hear from you. Her phone number is 471-4002, and I know she's going to have people doing everything from registration to evaluation to assisting in the rooms. So we, we really are anxious to get more help that day of the festival. Vendors and exhibitors, of course, are very important in supporting the festival. 
Mm -hmm. It's current. These are the these are the exhibitors. Um, I believe it's almost current. I was going to say it's completely current up to date, but I think I got a couple more yesterday. Anyway, these are the people we know for sure will be here, um, and there will be some others. So, if you oh, have no other voice. questions, I guess what I'd like to do next is, oh, I heard, just heard somebody. Go oh, ahead. this is Ruth, Ruth Ferris, and just Hi, being Ruth. on, being, this just excites me. I think we can get a carload from Central City to come. So I look Start forward to night. seeing you on the 14th. Hi, Ruth. This is Stephanie. I wanted to say hi to you. Hi, Ruth. This is Stephanie. I wanted to say hi. Oh, hi, Stephanie. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Long time no see. Well, we have we have had Stephanie out to our school and uh, talking to English classes about writing, and and uh, we have most of your books in the library. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> That's fabulous. I hope we get to see you on Saturday. You said you're going to bring a carload? That's great. I hope so, too. <laughs> well, I think it makes a great field trip for, for teachers, for students, but also for just people who love to read, you know, and, and want to immerse themselves in that kind of a day. Other comments or questions at this point? We probably touched on this, but I just wanted to say that uh, it's always been important to me that the festival provides one opportunity, uh, one very important opportunity to showcase and uh, uh, celebrate the uh, great writers we have in Nebraska uh, who uh, are writing wonderful uh, books, uh, fiction, poetry, nonfiction, the whole, the whole range of uh, writing. And uh, it's great to be able to uh, uh, see people uh, have a chance to get to know these writers and uh, explore their work. I guess I'd just like to, um, before we sign off, I would really like to give Stephanie and JV a chance to talk a little bit about their experiences either as writers or in a festival like this, whatever you'd like to talk about, and also if you'd like to read from anything. JV first. <laughs> oh, well, uh, my experiences, uh, I've touched on this before, my experiences have always been very positive. I mean, I love listening to the writers. I love just talking to writers. Stephanie mentioned that before. I mean, you get, for me, it's a chance to see people that I don't see very often. And um, so if the writers are there, uh, an audience for uh, what I've written or what other people have written. It's, it's a really special experience. Wayne State, we host a lot of readings up here. And I, I don't know that I can overestimate how, what a joy those readings often are um, for, the, for, for everybody involved. Uh, to have literature come alive through the author's voice, I think, is, is a real significant experience for 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 folks, uh, but yeah, I can I can read uh, if you'd like. I'll read a poem from City at War, um, and I was I thought of this poem this morning. Uh, there used to be ferries running across the Missouri, and then they're but they're not around anymore because we have enough bridges for people to get across. And and uh, I think it was the sunny morning and it put me in mind of a day years ago, um, and that put me in mind of this poem. It's called Dakota, 1933. Now, since the Corps of Engineers built the bridge, it's just across the river, a fast Thursday night trip to the university town's downtown slam, perfect fit for four in a Cadillac, headed to hear poets of another state cuss the president by name and list the long litany of his sins. Back in the day, we crossed on the ferry, an afternoon gig. While we waited by the closed bar and bait, the paddle wheelers struggled across the current of the only unditched stretch this side of Montana toward our raised flag. And when we ferried back across the wide and wild water, the pilot, back in country just that year, told of running off the bribe extorting corpsman with the 3030 from the wheelhouse. More guns than poems back then. But it's the wind, strong enough to flap a stiff hat brim and the 50-degree January night 
that makes tonight's trip historical. The lead foot of climate change accelerating this winter through a coyote killing cold November to April showers in a month. A pattern, I'm told, that apes a year at the heart of dust. Except for the vintage of the cars, it could be South Dakota in 1933, a town named for a French color, the color named for a western sky. We pull in at sundown, some savage scent in the street air. How hard must wind or war blow before we begin to club each other down in the streets? Still, even after we ignite the last of the world's gas, this trip's only a long, sunny winter day on a tall horse, the wind watching our backs, to cross the bridge late beneath stars and ride toward what lights the town has left to burn. And later, when all the dams have silted in or washed out, and that span too has crumbled, a man, or some species, will float us all on a different ferry just across the river to the other side. More guns than poems back then. Yeah. <laughs> it seems to be true, to, in my memory anyway. Wow. Well, that's just a little taste, I guess, of yeah. what it's going to be like at the Nebraska Book Festival. We'll have J.D. reading poetry. We'll have Stephanie reading from her book and many other writers and reading and listening and talking opportunities. We had missed one of the comments, actually, on the screen here. Laura has from Ben said she enjoyed seeing you when you were in Hogwarts. Well, well, thank you very much. So you have a fan club. <laughs> you don't even know it. <laughs> The libraries in Nebraska have been great um, to support my work, and I really appreciate them all, so this will be fun, too. But um, the libraries are very important places for us all. I don't know what I would have done without the library when I was homeschooling my four kids, so it was pretty much my textbook in many ways. So um, it's always fun to go to the libraries to talk about Nebraska history, which is a passion of mine and all the, the great secrets from uh, from history, when JV was talking about the ferry, it, I, um, my next year's book is about women um, homesteading in Dawson County, Nebraska, Civil War widows coming out and making homestead claims. And um, it's the year before when they get to the Missouri, they take the train from St. Louis to Council Bluffs, and the train just stopped. And the bridge wasn't finished, so then they had to get on a ferry and go across to Omaha, and they could get on the train again. And, one of my editors made the comment, I had no idea there was no bridge across the river then. And I was like, well, you know, there weren't always bridges across the river. So it's always fun to learn those little tidbits. And it'll be fun to do some reading from one of those books and talk about the real inspiration behind it. And I think that's a great thing that Stephanie does. I've, I've heard you read before, and, and I, I really appreciate the way you talk about your research. And that'll be a feature of your presentation. It will be. It you'll will talk be. about where it all comes from. I'll be an odd bird among the writers, but it'll be fun. I think the other thing about a festival like this is we, when we are from a place, we tend to forget what a rich literary heritage we do have mm -hmm. and how many wonderful working writers we have in our state. So it's always a great encouragement to look around and go, wow, Nebraska really does have a lot to offer to not only our state, but also to the rest of the, of, of the country. We have a lot of wonderful people saying a lot of worthwhile things. So that's another, it's a good reminder at a festival like this to look around and go, wow, all these people are working writers? That's amazing. Who would have thought? And it is a great reminder. Another great reminder is the number of people who have signed up for our writers workshops and the fact that we have a waiting list. That's, that's pretty great. cool. Yeah, that's, that's pretty great. cool. And we're thrilled about that. And they'll all want the secret. And the secret <laughs> is you sit down at the keyboard and start to fill that blank screen with words. You know, nobody wants to hear that. It's hard work. <laughs> we want to make it, uh, we'd like to think of it as being easy, but no. No. I'm sure you I personally can't wait to hear hard. the poets speak because I stand in awe of the poets. I, I don't know how that brain works, but I love to, <laughs> to hear them talk about how their brain works, and I love to hear them read because it, it we're always more amazed with what we can't do than what we do do. <laughs> so. Yeah, and, and I don't know, I'm, I'm sure that other writers would, would echo this, but when I write something, I have to write it over about a thousand times <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to the point where I'm just so sick of it, I can't even believe it. Even an would. email has to be edited. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> I write it and put it 
sit down, come back the next afternoon and say, okay, Oops. now is this really what I want to say? Yeah. <laughs> so it, when I write poetry, it's really bad. I mean, I don't think it's ever done. But at any rate, uh, thank you all. JD, have you got another comment? Oh, I was just going to say, well, it's never done, right? It's only abandoned. I think we just finally have to walk <laughs> That's away. That's a great quote. That's wonderful. I love it. I love it, and I agree. <laughs> Please, anybody else for the good of the group, if I've forgotten anything that that we need to be sure to, to remind people about, um, please do go to our website, send your customers, your library customers and your students to our website. Um, hope to see you all there. Come early, stay late. <laughs> Come early, stay late. Drink coffee. Drink coffee. There'll be lots of coffee. The coffee books. house. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know what I forgot. Facebook. Facebook, yeah. If you're on Facebook, please become a fan of our Facebook page. And there we are. This is a great resource. Uh, Kevin Brockmeyer from our office has been ably managing our Facebook page, and she's been adding all the information about our vendors and exhibitors and our writers and our fans, and she's been encouraging people to uh, do little questions. Uh, this has been kind of fun because she read, she's asking questions each week like, have you read A Lantern in Her Hand? And then people talk about what A Lantern in Her Hand meant to them. And it's, it's just been a real fun thing to use Facebook as one of our publicity tools and just one of our ways of connecting with each other. And I hope we continue to use Facebook even after the festival. I'd like to have our people who attended the Writers' Workshop share some of their pieces, some of their work through Facebook or, you know, not the whole thing, obviously, but, but with their sections or something that they'd be willing to say. 135 fans so far. Wow. Yes, 135 yeah. fans of the book festival. All right. So, again, please do join our Facebook uh, fan page, and, and it's a way to stay in touch with other writers and readers. Anything else for the good of the group? Any other questions from our audience and or from you too, of course, JD? Uh, no, I think you've covered. I mean, uh, you've covered everything I can think of and done it admirably well, Mary Jo. Oh, I hear someone talking, but we can't hear you. Can you get closer to your microphone? Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, anybody have any final comments or questions? I've unmuted you all if you do have microphones. I see Laura already said in the chat that thanks for a great session. And thank you all, and we'll see you Saturday, November 14th. Thanks so much. <laughs>10 a.m. Um, just rather than Wednesday. Um, so I hope you'll join us for that. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.